coming. Adam King, WBMS. Coach, what made Carlos the right choice for the running back room? Yeah, just start off by saying I, I think I'm getting some allergies here this morning, so I apologize ahead of time if I start sneezing. Um, yeah, Carlos. Uh, first off, when, when you hear about Carlos's story, um, it's it's captivating. You know, where he's come from, and um, and then you start to listen to his his overall knowledge of the position, um, his aggressiveness in recruiting. Um, the impact he's had on people, the relationships he's had on people, um, it was it was an absolute slam dunk for us. He's already in a short period of time uh, brought in a, an edge and a toughness and an aggressiveness that I think is going to be excellent. Uh, Cameron T. Robinson, the Athletic. Ryan, when you were what, what was that process like as you, you picked Carlos and, and what do you feel like he brings to the room different than maybe some of the other people? Um, yeah, as you can imagine, we had a lot of candidates, a lot of different folks that we spoke to. Um, you know, mostly over Zoom, but um, I think there was over 12 different people that we identified in the process. And you no, know, I think we talked about how we want to make sure that we're really thorough in the process. Um, felt like we, you know, we really did the, did that in the uh, search for the office coordinator, and I think um, that was a success. And I think it was the same thing here. Um, and, and because of the timing of it all, it allowed us the opportunity to be thorough with it and, you know, really dig in on recruiting questions, dig in on uh, scheme, you know, talking about the run game, talking about protection, talking about overall philosophy, all these different things, and uh, interviewed some really good people, pared it down to about four, four or five, but felt Carlos just stuck out for a lot of reasons. Um, and, you know, I just was impressed, again, with his overall mentality, his approach, but uh, but also just his uh, understanding of football, you know, and he's, um, I think the guys really like him and his approach. Um, I think it's going to, again, be a home run for us. First, you mentioned that Trey puts on, like, the guys in the room but be a part of it. What was their feedback as you went through the process of practice? Really, most of the guys in a room knew Coach Locke from the recruiting days, so there wasn't really much um, in terms of you know having to introduce them to the room. They all knew exactly who he was, and had built a relationship in the recruiting process. So uh, when they heard that you know, he was one of the finalists, I mean, it was immediate. You could look, you could see in their eyes that they were excited about it, and uh, you know that might have been one of the things that put me over the top. And um, so. It was uh, it was great. Now you know it's been a challenge for him to kind of step in in the middle of the last couple of weeks of um, spring practice. He's kind of um, you know just taking it hour to hour right now. Um, but his hustle, his intensity, his, his effort, um, all of the above, attention to detail has been, been you know noticeable early on. Well, I'm going to ask that we keep our questions to uh, just one, uh, with just a, a few exceptions there, just so we can get as many people asking at least one question. Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Brent, what do you want to see from the offensive line uh, to finish up the career? Not just Saturday, but today. I guess, what did you see from today and Friday? Uh, what do they need to show you before uh, Sunday? I think the first thing when you're in the spring, we've talked about this before, you want to see individual improvement. Um, and then as we get into the preseason, it becomes more of like, all right, what's the chemistry of the secondary look like? What's the chemistry of the offensive line, the quarterbacks with the receivers? But the spring to me is more of an individual evaluation. Like, are you getting better? You know, take that one individual player. And so we, we need to continue to see that. But we are seeing that across the board. I think, you know, the biggest thing is that right side, you know, that right guard position and then that battle as things have gone on. Um, you know, we, we've we've moved Seth and, and Carson both there. We've used Luke. We've, we've you know, tried Tegra inside. So we, we've used a bunch of different combinations there. And I think, um, you know, I think it's, you know, by the end of the, this week, we need to at least identify where we're going and where we project that, even if it continues into the preseason, which it may. Um, but I feel like, you know, the both tackles have really improved. Um, you, it's it's noticeable. Um, you know, Donovan has improved. His leadership has been felt out there. Um, I do think that Seth and Car Carson have both had good springs as well. Um, so really want to see if, you know, someone could take the next step in that right guard position, however that all shakes out. Did you say that the right tackle then, 
Are you guys feeling really confident with where Josh is at right tackle? I mean, is it basically just down to center and right guard at this point? I feel Josh has played some right guard for us this spring to see what that would look like as Tegra moved out there. We've tried some different combinations. I think Josh could play both positions, but we do feel confident with him right now playing at tackle. Tony Gerben, Buckeye Hall. Ryan Julian Sand loses his black stripe earlier than any freshman quarterback you've had. What goes into that, and is there is there a danger in doing that when you've got so many quarterbacks in the room? No, I, I you know I guess what was it practice nine, um, but but he's he's been in there and competing and he's making plays and um, you know the, the guys you know the guys know and, and a lot of times with with the black stripe it's uh, it's a lot of times the players you know they know you know they they, they see it and um, you know guy makes a play or you know shows up over an extended period of time but you know in nine practices in you can see that he was making a lot of throws and in big spots you know even against the ones and so the play speaks for itself and um again it's usually when you get your black stripe off it's because you've earned the respect of the team and i think he's done that well ultimately it's my call uh cj barnett has a lot of say in it but but the players do too you know and and you know you can tell when when you know guys have the respect of the team and it's anybody who you know has their black stripe coming off and there's there's a few guys that probably are right on the, the verge of that as well and um, and I know it means a lot to them because it, you know feels like they've they've put it on the field um, you have to earn it in the in the weight room first but then you put it on the field and you start making plays it speaks for itself and guys start to see that. Pat Murphy, twenty four seven sports. Ryan, <clears throat> with the quarterback competition, I feel like last spring we were asking you about how you handle it coming out of, of spring practice and, and whatnot. Is there anything that you learned, be it end of spring practice, summer, fall camp, about that process a year ago that you may apply to, to what you have here, even though it's obviously a different situation? Yeah, I think you learn from every year. Um, looking back on last year, I'm not sure if I would have done it any different. I think the way that it all shook out, um, you know, I felt like it was it was a battle even going up into the first game and then it wasn't clear cut even until we got into a few games in um you know um uh, so but but i think you just keep getting these reps and you just keep compiling these reps and you figure out you know as guys get into the situations how they handle it i think saturday will be another barometer to figure out where guys are at um i think we got a great crowd planned so you know we're I think we're north of 50,000 tickets already sold, right? And we got good weather planned on Saturday. We'll knock on wood on that. So, you know, good opportunity for some of these guys to get out there and play Lincoln and Julian. And, but then also Devin and Will. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, the more reps these guys get in those type of environments, you see what it looks like, and then they grow from there. So you're trying to see where they're at, but you're also trying to project where they can be as we head into the summer. Jeremy Birmingham, podcast. All right, obviously, uh, transfer portal reopens on Monday. In, in this era of college football, how are you guys prepping for that? I mean, and how insane is it to think that you've just gone through these last six, seven weeks of spring practice, and now you're looking at potentially another changing 10% of the roster by the end of Monday to the start of fall practice? Yeah, it's, it is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's unique, but... I mean, I feel like we have a team that, you know, has come together for a common purpose. And, you know, we talk about, you know, why why do you play so hard here at Ohio State? It's because of the, the brotherhood, the love of your, your teammates. I think we have a good group that way. I think guys want to be here. They want to be at Ohio State. They understand what it means to be a Buckeye. They see the opportunity this season. So, you know, I don't see a bunch of guys that are just looking to run out the door. I think there'll be a couple of different situations that maybe it does make sense for for, for guys to maybe look at other places, but um, and, and we'll just you know we'll adapt as as those happen. But we know we're going to have to play with a lot of depth next year. If you're playing 16 or 17 games more than ever before, guys are going to play football. So you might be a you might be a two right now, or you might be a three, but you could be in the college football playoffs fighting for you know a championship and, and be the guy that we're counting on. So. Um, I just think this is <clears throat> this is a different and unique time that we're stepping into. So when guys are looking at the depth chart, I don't think it's as important as it always has been in the past. There's going to be a lot of football played next year, and we're going to roll guys and play depth, especially in the first half of the season, because we're going to need them in the second half of the season. And 11 Warriors. 
Ryan, with the quarterback competition, have you started to narrow it down at all, and has anybody started to separate from the others? Um, no, I don't think we've narrowed it down. Um, but you know, you're seeing guys make certain plays and um, certain things that are showing up in, in practice um, as we start to get into some of the move it stuff and you get in the situational things um, you're starting to you know just see commonalities um, a lot of guys you know these guys bring great things to the table each guy brings you know either an experience or a skill set that's different from the others the good news is they all can move and that's certainly made an impact on the run game um, and the past game you know there's there's good things there there's still things that they're improving on but um, yeah, you're you're seeing you know some separation. I I wouldn't say that you know I'm ready to name a starter or anything like that, but um, but there's been good competition and, and guys have made plays. Um, but I think ultimately what we're looking for is the consistency over time. How much of a factor is Julian in that com in that competition as a true freshman? Uh, he's 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 in the mix. He is. Yeah, he's. Um, you know, Chip really rolls them. It doesn't matter if the ones, twos, and threes. So you get an opportunity to see what guys look like. I think sometimes maybe. When you're young, you know you get the three work, and it, sometimes it can look like a mess out there. Um, and so it, th this has been a really good, you know, sample size to figure out where guys are at. But but Julian's been competing his tail off, and uh, he'll continue to do that. And he's got a very bright future, I and mean, he's got to have a really good summer. Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. Hey, just following up on that to clarify, how do you use the quarterbacks on Saturday? Is there certain guys that are going to get most of the reps with the one offense? Yeah. So the plan on Saturday is to. Um, you know, we'll have our ones out there. Um, they'll, you know, some of the the guys who have you know thousand plus reps who have played a lot of football here um, will be in a little bit of a thud mode early on. But but then when it goes over with with the next group, it'll be offense versus defense. It'll all be tackle. Um, you know, the rest of the way. Um, so we'll, we'll be smart about that. You know, someone like Travion Henderson doesn't need to get tackled on Saturday. Um, but. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be competitive. We're going to get after it and give the quarterbacks opportunities, even with the ones in there, to to go ahead and make plays. And we'll try to create some situations for all those guys to get reps. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll roll it and try to give guys as many reps as they possibly can and go from there. With, uh, sorry, with, with Dallin reportedly leaving or informing you guys he's leaving, do you guys have enough depth at running back or the quality, I guess, experience depth that you want there? Do you have to look in the portal to – subsidize that position yeah you know we're, we're looking for five you know and um and so you know i think i think we, you know we're in a situation where we'll, we'll be at five you know if if we need to add a, a six then we'll look into that but uh, right now um i think we'll be in a situation where we, we feel comfortable with five guys what was your initial conversation like with carlos and um did you have to recruit him pretty hard i'm just curious how that that first conversation went um you know he was excited. We were excited. It was just, I think it was kind of mutual. Um, it's unique because of where it's at in spring, you know, and that, that's, that's a tough spot for anybody to be in. And uh, I felt it on the other end of it. So, um, you know, he's a guy who always wants to, you know, do things the right way and handle himself the right way. But I think he just saw this opportunity as such a great opportunity for him. And um, I think we were probably both recruiting each other the same. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Kellyanne Stitz, W. Coach, going back to the spring game, what does that say for it to be nationally televised? What does it say about the momentum yeah. around this program and how excited are the guys for this opportunity? Yeah, I think it's a great, great uh, day planned. Um, an opportunity to be the first ever spring game that's going to be televised nationally on Fox. It's just so exciting for our guys and uh, for Buckeye Nation and for the program. Um, really cool, really great opportunity. So our guys want to put on a good show, you know, and have some fun with it. Um, and and like you said, you know, there's going to be a lot of great recruits here. Um, there's a lot of great momentum around the program and, and how things have, have continued to build. But um, and, and then even that night, you know, we have an event here uh, in the Woody, a concert we call Saddle Up that, um, you know, is an opportunity to raise some money, but, but also, um, you know, getting a lot done just in terms of giving back and uh, some charities as well. So it's a little bit of combination of NIL and some charity work, uh, but also an opportunity to have some fun. So Gary Lavox is here and north of Nashville, some then we started last year in the Woody, where folks get to actually come into the Woody, which not everybody gets an opportunity to do, and then actually have a concert uh, on, on on the indoor. So uh, between that and the spring game itself, after the spring game, we do a barbecue for the families here. It's a long day, but it's a great day, and so uh, we're praying for great weather. Uh, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. When we uh, 
asked you about Will Howard uh, after the last practice. You said, you know, he's coming along, obviously a new system, yep. but you wanted to see a lot of growth in the next two weeks. Have you seen that? And where where does – is there a pecking order? Is he still the presumptive favorite? Um, that's that's – you know, we haven't really talked about that very much, but his experience is definitely showing. I think that um, he's played a lot of football before, and um, I, I think his combination on the field of being able to extend plays with his feet, run in the run game, you know, pull the ball, well, we've seen that happen before, and then be accurate with the with, with you know in the pocket, throwing the ball, play action on the move, all those things put stress on the defense, and so. You know, we're trying to put him in the most difficult situations we possibly can, third down, third and long, second and long, different situations, just to see how, how those guys respond, just like everybody else. But uh, one thing about Will is he's working really hard. Uh, he's in the building early. He's in the building late. Uh, he's putting a lot of work in. You can just see that. I think the guys see that. And you know, another part of all those quarterbacks is, you know, what, what do the guys think? What do the receivers think? What does the offensive line think? Um, and I think he's done a really good job of you know trying to win those guys over. Uh, I think all, all the quarterbacks have, but you know you definitely see the hard work there. You see the experience and you see the ability. I think every practice that he's out there, he's learning the offense and feeling more comfortable with it. Devin looked really good in the practice. We saw. Did you kind of assess his spring? Yeah, I, I think that uh, you know he's now into year three. And a lot of the things that we're doing is still what we've done in the past, so that he probably feels the most comfortable out there with the offense. And you see that. Um, you know, the big thing with him is just being being as consistent as he possibly can, and keep the keep the offense moving because uh, he certainly has the ability and definitely flashes. Uh, Austin Ward, the podcast. And who on the defense is giving the offense the biggest headache this spring? <clears throat> right, Jim Knowles. Uh, you know, I think with our defense this year, it, it, you know, with, with Sonny, with CJ, with um, Cody, you're seeing Gabe in there, Arvell Reese. You know, we got some pretty good length in there at linebacker, uh, and they're flashing. But I, I would say probably, you know, it's, it's, you know, the interior guys up front, you know, they're, they're, they're um, you know, creating havoc in the backfield. Um, DBs are, are, are very active. You know, they're um, getting their hands on a lot of balls. So uh, I think it's everybody. I think the, the, the coverage and the rush is working together. Um, you know, the scheme is now into year three, and I think guys are understanding. You're starting to see Caleb really understand now. You know, the first six, seven practices, and now like the second half of the spring, he's really taken off. You just see how fast he's seeing it. But I think our guys have done a really good job of making you know, zone look like man, man look like zone. The pressure, you know, all those things are really starting to add up, and it's it's you know, it's not easy on, on the offensive side. Um, so I think it's the combination of scheme and talent, but um, but I, I do think overall we have pretty good athleticism and length, especially in you know in this the second level. Tim May, Tim May podcast. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Julian Sayan, for example. Where are you in starting a freshman quarterback? Do you look at him as just another one of the guys competing out there, or do you keep in mind he's a freshman? Just kind of what's your thinking along those lines, right? I think it's just the mindset for him is that he needs to be ready to go, you know, play at Oregon. He's got to be ready to go play at Penn State. He's got to go ready to play against the team up north. He's got to go play for the Big Ten and a national championship. And that's in his mind because as we know the last time – a national championship was one. We were on to quarterback three, and you know, with the quarterbacks having the ability to run, like we haven't done that a lot here. Justin was probably the last one, and boy, he he really kind of limped in the the last couple games because of that. And so we're going to need guys. So I think, you know, now more than when we had CJ and and Dwayne. And even Kyle, where we didn't really run those guys, they kind of survived the whole season. You know, we're gonna we're gonna run the quarterback some this year, and because of that, we're gonna need depth, and so that room's got to be strong. So, to me, it's not about like you know maybe in the past where it was like just the quarterback and we were gonna kind of keep him keep him upright. You know, this year you know we're gonna do that with Chip. So, uh, we need depth in that room. So his mindset's got to be that I'm playing next year, and and if you know he's the best available at the time, then he's gonna play. You know how like, the youngster comes comes in sometimes. They they get in line, but sometimes they line up and they want to, you know what I mean? They, they want they want the line to go this way, not that way. Yeah. And stuff. Has he been like that? A certain it's been unbelievable. I mean, How has that shown up? I guess. Not just really good. I mean, he has a good plan when he gets out there. Um, you know, doesn't want to get his hand held. 
Um, I've been impressed with his approach, and like I said before, he's got a really, really bright future. I mean, how fast he gets on the field will be just you know kind of up to him. Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, just to clarify, with with, with down, is, is he, has he told you his plans are to transfer to um, the deal? Or? Yeah, I think you know he. We're going to keep all those conversations private and kind of wait till um, wait till next week to talk about it. Yeah. Bill Landis, the podcast, Kings of the North. <clears throat> right, you said um, coming into spring ball that you know you had some stuff to figure out on the right side of the line, but you felt confident that you had the answers in house. Do you still feel that way as, as spring ball wraps up? I, I think uh, we have to look at everything. Um, I, I don't. I'm not sitting here and saying one way or the other. I think the. I like to watch the film today. We we did a couple moving some guys around to see how that went, um, and then see how Saturday goes, and then kind of go from there. But um, I sit, can't sit here and tell you that you know I know that that right side's solidified right now. So I think we got to keep looking at all options. And you said you think both tackles, jo the Joshes, I guess, uh, have, have improved. Um, yeah. Just what specifically have you seen from those guys that finished say that? Um, I think it's just overall production. Um, you know, you're just seeing, um, especially in pass protection, you just see those guys in better position, um, you know, against Jack and JT and Kenyatta and those guys, you know, they're Mitchell, Caden, you know, they're, they're, they're just more consistent blocking them. So, um, whether it's, well, first off, I think Josh Fryer has really changed his body, you know, his body fats down. And that's something his diet and everything we really hammered this off season, and so I think that was significant in how how quickly his feet are moving because he's very he's you know sharp in what he does and, he, and he's bending better. I think for Josh Simmons, it, you know that was never an issue, although he is in great shape. Um, I think it's more of the experience and understanding of the offense, uh, playing more football and and more of the, the 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 mental part of it. So I think both guys have benefited from another year, but both for different reasons. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Uh, we've some different variations of this question before, but you've got a quarterback room with just a wide variety of different descriptions of guys from very experienced guys to like Julia, who maybe has showed up and looked a bit better than most freshman quarterbacks typically show up. Yep. You've also got a season that's, as you mentioned, a little bit longer, a little bit different, maybe yep. a more favorable schedule this time around. And we've seen other programs do this before, but in your philosophy in picking a starting, a starting quarterback, what matters more, the older guy with maybe a little bit more experience or the younger guy who might be flashing some upside early on that you might be able to tap into at some point, you know, later down the line? Well, right I think the, the good thing for us is that we might have both, which is great. So if that's the case, then we'll play, we'll play those guys. I think that's um, what this season offers, the way that you, know, you look at the season. Um, and we're going to do whatever we can to win games. That's what it comes down to. But we also know what our goal is at the end of the season and what is going to put us in position to do that at the end of the season and making sure we have you know, two or three quarterbacks that can go help us reach our goals is going to be the number one thing. So how do we do that? Uh, we got to figure that part out. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, right now, the focus is just getting these guys as many reps as we can, evaluating them. But as we head into the preseason, into the into the season, um, you know, that probably means getting guys reps on, in the game, so that they you know don't get put into a situation where they haven't played a lot of football before. Unique to maybe in the past. You know, I think about where Lincoln was in that bowl game. He was not ready to play in that game. He would tell you, and it wasn't his fault. You know, just, um, you know, Kyle had played, and then when he ended the portal, then, you know, Devin went to, was in the bowl practice and got hurt so early, and then, you know, he kind of got thrown into that. Um, where this year we can't be in that situation because we know um, we are going to run the quarterbacks this year. We have to build depth in that position. And that puts you in a situation where maybe you're more open to maybe putting the guy out there in meaningful snaps once the season rolls around just for the sake of not being thrown in that situation again? We, we haven't talked about that, but that very possible, possibly could happen, yeah, if that's what we're trying to do. Um, that's a ways away, but we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there. But I, I think that that's certainly something that's worth discussing. Andy Baxter, Letterman Rowe. Ryan, what have you seen from James Peoples so far this spring? And, and he's only can contribute right away for you guys. Yeah, I think both freshmen and TC Caffey, uh, all three of those guys. So Sam, James, and TC have had very good springs. Um, I've been very impressed with their approach. I got a chance to spend time with them for those couple weeks, which was great to see um, the way that they go into meetings, the way they answer questions, their attention to detail. Uh, I'm looking to see them, you know, run and and you know, in a live situation on Saturday because I think um, all of those backs um, have talent and um, all of them can catch out of the backfield 
all of them are really good in protection and they can run outside and inside the tackles. So um, first time they get tackled to be on Saturday, but um, all three of those guys have done a nice job. I mean, Trey and Quinshawn have been uh, really solid, but but those three guys, to see them go play in the game will be fun um, and an opportunity for everyone to see those guys with the ball in their hand. Andy Backford, uh, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Guys, I'm sorry, I only got time for just a couple more. You mentioned that uh, how quickly Julian gets on the field is going to be up to him. What are some of the things you need to see from now to through the fall camp that may push him onto the field? Is it just a matter of adjusting the speed of the game? I guess where does he not measure up to Will and Devin right now that you can still get to? Yeah, just overall experience and then just maturity, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, all those things. But he, he's he's shown great signs. Um, but you know, he's I think he's put on maybe 15 pounds. He's got here. That's great. Um, but but the overall strength and just you know size and um, and then then it's a matter of just experience. But um, I, I, I like his approach. I mean, I see I see things in him that lead us to believe he's got a really bright future, and it's very very encouraging. And final question, folks: Andy Anders, uh, Eleven Warriors. Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to wrap up by talking about tight end depth. I guess where are those guys at coming out of yeah. spring, uh, trying to find those options behind G? Yeah, yeah G. Uh, I think the last time I I came in, I felt strong about G. I still feel the same way. I think he's taken the next step in, in the um, you know in the progression and blocking. Now, when you're playing tight end, you know, 60, 70 plays can really add up. And so well, we're going to have to roll at times. Uh, I think Will Kazmarek every every day has gotten better. So that's been great. Jelani has improved, certain, seen him do some really good things. He's been great in the red zone, catching a few balls. Um, and, and Pat Gerd and, and Bennett have also um, you know, shown certain things. And so the room across the board, um, you know, has has been solid, you know, and, and, and having depth at that position, even having, you know, um, you know, someone like Jace Middleton or, you know, some of the guys, you know, Max next as he comes in, you know, we're going to have to continue to have depth in that room because the same thing, like we get in December and January, you just don't know where that depth's going to be. So we got to make sure that, you know, if we're in 12 personnel, and we're three deep at that position. That means there's six guys that you feel okay putting in a game, and that's a big ask. But um, you know, I think the, the top guys are playing well. They got to continue to improve. They all have things they got to improve on. But um, but I would say overall, we're starting to build that depth in that room. Coach, thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks,